Hello and welcome to Captain's Academy. In this tutorial, we'll be learning how to mold make and cast objects, not necessarily just to replicate something. It's a really great skill to have, especially if you want to make a material look like something else. So you want to remold it and cast it and make it look like metal. And plus, it's great if you are lighting up models because those opaque plastic parts, you want to make them see through. And so this process is ideal for that. Anyway, that's enough of me banging on, let's get going. The item I've chosen to replicate is this communicator badge from Star Trek The Next Generation. This is one of the few that I've seen on the market that is not only screen accurate but was moulded from the actual studio prop. And because of its size, this is a great object to demonstrate how to make a one part mould to pull a cast from. Latex gloves, a hot glue gun, double sided tape, scales, or in this case, kitchen scales stolen from the kitchen, plastic card, a kitchen tile. I'll explain later, disposable spatulas, mixing cup, old newspapers or parcel paper, and of course the rubber silicon to make the mould and the resin to make the cast, which I've added links in the video description below. Safety first. So on with the latex gloves not only for safety, but also protection from the mess, as these chemicals are gooey and really difficult to clean off. Due to it being non-porous and easy to clean, I'm using a kitchen tile to act as a base. This also keeps costs low, as this is ideal not only for mold making of small objects, but also as a painting palette that can be used over and over again. We secure the object onto the base with double sided sticky tape. This is important because if the object isn't secured properly, it will move and may even float. Once stuck down, we can check to make sure it's flat on the base. If not, the silicon will creep underneath and set. Now to make the box around the object, a hot glue gun is perfect for this as it's fast and will do two things to help us. It will glue the plastic card walls down and provide a watertight seal. Now it's down to your judgement to how much negative space you want around your object, but it's better to have more than less. Or the mould will be too thin and flexible, which will make it easier to tear, and we might need to make a jacket to hold the shape in place, which will take more time, more effort and money. Now the box is made, we need to make sure to double check there's no gaps, because if there's a leak, things can get messy really quickly later. Trust me, never take a chance with chemicals. I ruined too many IKEA desktops to learn that lesson. To avoid waste and save money, you can do a little maths by working out the volume of the box we're going to fill. We can make the exact amount required by using this calculation. So if we multiply the length, width and depth of the box, we will get the volume which in this case is 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres by 2 centimetres, which gives us 200 centimetre cubed. Although mixing cups cost more than a standard water cooler cups that we could use, these are important as some chemicals can melt cheaper cups and again, not something you want spilling out everywhere. Also, these come with handy measuring increments on the side where we can see how much to pour. Last thing we need to do is to make sure the surface is clean. Using a brush, delicately remove any dust or foreign particles off the object. As this silicon is so good, it will make a form of everything it comes into contact with, even fingerprints left on the object. 
Okay, just an FYI, this skill is really useful, but could be useful bad as well, because people may want to, people might actually want to copy something to sell, which isn't great for the small businesses that make these awesome objects. Now, this particular example, I'm doing it just for myself. I'm not going to resell this at all. And also, I want to remake it in a metal-like substance that I'm going to be using for my Enterprise D model base. Whatever mold making chemical you choose, it will have a separate data sheet. Or with this brand, it's stuck on the container. And it's likely to come in two parts. In this case, the silicon and the catalyst. This means unlike commonly used chemicals like wood glue that only require air to cure, meaning to set, this needs a catalyst to make the silicon activate. And reading the label, this requires a ratio of one part catalyst to 10 parts silicon. Before pouring the silicon, the scales need to be zeroed, meaning we don't want the cup weight to be included in the measure as we only want the contents weight. Now to slowly pour our silicon. Knowing the maximum amount we need to fill the box, we can guesstimate a lesser amount that will cover the whole object with enough thickness that will make the mold durable and less likely to tear. The contents measures 170 grams, so a tenth of 170 is 17. So 170 grams of silicon plus 17 grams of catalyst is 187 which means we need to carefully add catalyst to this cup until the reading measures 187. Because the catalyst is red, this gives a great indication when the silicon is properly mixed. And it does this by turning the white silicon pink as we slowly stir, making sure there's no streaks, which will result in some parts not curing. Captain's tip. The enemy of the whole process is the air bubble. Professional workshops and those with deeper pockets will have something called a degassing machine. This is essentially a pressure cooker like pot with a machine that sucks the air out. This eliminates air bubbles in the mix that would otherwise show up in your cast in the form of voids. As it's unlikely most of us don't have one, we can help the bubbles leave the mix by slowly mixing rather than whisking. Also, we can follow up with tapping the mixture to encourage the air bubbles to raise and leave the mix. As this particular silicon takes up to 20 minutes to start curing, we have time to let those air bubbles escape. Aiming the pour on the base lets the silicon slowly envelop the object so to avoid air being trapped on the surface of the object itself. This needs to be done on a level table surface or the thickness will differ from one side to the other. And again, we can give it a few taps to encourage any troublesome air bubbles out. Once cured and the silicon feels firm, we can slowly remove the box away from the silicon. And this is my favorite part, slowly and carefully pulling out the object to see the result, while making sure not to damage the mold because I want to use this again. And there we have it, a lovely negative ready to have a cast made in whatever material we want. There are many different materials we can now make a cast from. The most common resin model and prop makers use is what is known as fast cast, but it's also known by many other names. It's an opaque resin that cures in minutes, which is really easy to use as it's a 50-50 mix by weight. This is durable, light, and picks up every detail. First, we need to shake the bottle before pouring in separate cups. Unlike silicon, there isn't much time because as soon as the chemicals are mixed, the curing happens rapidly. So much so that the cup will start to heat up. But before the pour, tapping the cup will knock out as many air bubbles as we can. 
and then we carefully pour the resin into the mould. Using a soft tool like a toothpick or a brush, as I said before, I like to make sure that all the tight spaces are free from air bubbles and properly coated all over the surface. It doesn't matter if there's air bubbles in the resin, just so long it's not on the surface of the resin as it won't be seen. As we can see, already the resin is curing as it turns milky white, which means it's too late to do anything else but wait. This reaction takes around 3 to 5 minutes, but it needs to be left longer to make sure it's properly hardened. To check it's ready, rather than poke it and risk damaging the cast, checking the cup that the resin was poured from is a good method to check. Only when it's hardened and completely cooled, we can slowly pry the silicon away. This is more to save the mould from being damaged and so we can use it multiple times. And there we have it, a successful mould that's created a perfect cast. The unwanted flaky bits are called flash and can be cleaned up with sanding later. Now that we've got a good silicon mould, this can make many copies so long it's treated well. Also it means we can play around and experiment casting with the object in different materials such as clear resin. Or if we add metal particles or dye, we can make it look like it's made from metal without having to paint. Or if we want to be inventive, impregnate the resin before it cures with a magnet. This will mean we can make this badge attached to clothes by using another magnet behind without using velcro, glue or pins. O'Brien? Yes sir. One to beam up. 